This is Niels. And I come from Idorodom in East Greenland, which is one of the world's most isolated places. Perfect! <laughs> Finally! <laughs> <laughs> Only 10 tries! <laughs> Only 10 tries! <laughs> About 88% of Greenland's 57,000 residents, including Niels, are natives, called Inuits. In the US, we know them as Eskimos, but that word can be offensive to people here, although they are in the same ethnic group as other Arctic settlers of Alaska, Canada, and Siberia. The thing we are sure of is that we have roots in Canada, and that's where also most of our tradition is from and culture because of the way they were back in the day. Niels was born and raised in Itotokormit. And here behind me we have where I live. That I've been living here since I actually I was born and uh, it's actually uh, one of the best views we have in the city so it's a little good for the bonus. And it's safe to say that he had a much different childhood than you and me. That's the best water in the world. Yeah, just totally fresh. Melted snow. Wow, I mean you can see how clear it is. Oh man. God, that's so good. It's like an unlimited supply of water. So Niels and I drove out here about a couple kilometers from the town and it's almost like there's no town there. I mean, you're just like completely in the nature here. Mountains everywhere. The Inuit people are the ultimate hunters and survivors, keeping on the same traditions since the beginning of time. They eat whatever animals they're able to kill and they tough out the coldest winter conditions on earth. It's a big part of my life and a big part of my tradition to be a hunter and uh, try to uh, get uh, what my family needs and we have a closer contact with nature and a huge respect for nature. His language is called East Greenlandic and it sounds like this. There is a sign behind you that I'm not going to attempt to pronounce it. So what does it say? Well, it says uh, that means uh, the football field road or avenue. But Niels also speaks Danish because Denmark technically owns Greenland and it's the first language they learn in school other than Greenlandic. So we have uh, our own uh, somewhat independent government that, that we are trying to become more and more independent through the years, but uh, we have great support from Denmark economically and politically. What I find most interesting about Niels is how he keeps coming back home after living and studying overseas. You'd think that when people from this town get exposed to the outside world, they will be hooked on the lifestyle and opportunities, but not Niels. Of course, I'm leaving the town to get educated as a carpenter, so that I actually have a job to fall back on when I'm back in Dordogne, but I want to end my last days on Earth here and no other places else. Greenland! Greenland! He chooses to return home, where he knows everybody by name. Yeah, that's the truth. I know everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and he can go hunting for seals. It's been a wonderful time hanging out with Niels and getting a local perspective of his hometown. It's a different life than what I grew up to say the least, but it's certainly one to admire. All right, Drew. Yeah, it's been really great meeting you, but uh, I just got a phone call that there's a uh, polar bear near the town, so I gotta go off and do some hunting. Yeah. Yeah. So how do, how do you react when people ask you like stereotypical questions? Like, does it bother you? People mm. say, oh, do you live in igloos or do you, do you... Well, mostly I laugh at it and say, yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, push on the stereotypical thing. And I even had questions if uh, there are penguins in Greenland. And <laughs> I keep on the joke with, I say, I have uh, five penguins in my backyard next to my polar bear ride. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Drew Binsky, and if you like my travel videos, please click subscribe and join me as I plan to visit every country in the world.